G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are doing a round seven kind of round vlog, not just a match day vlog. Of course, the Western Derby is tomorrow and I will be in attendance, but thought I'd expand the vlog a little bit, show you what we are doing all weekend long. We are going to do a stream right now. Uh, Busher and I, Busher's about to arrive any minute now. Adelaide versus the Giants, so hope to see you guys on the stream. Then after that, I'm driving to uh, a mystery suburb. I won't say where Drewsy lives, but it's uh, it's north of the river. I gotta drive up like half an hour to get on his stream for the Brisbane Lions Port Adelaide game. Then tomorrow I'm vlogging the Derby. So, Bush is about to arrive. I'm gonna have to start setting up soon and we're gonna get cracked straight into it. Let's get some tips going, what do you reckon? All right, well I got a big juicy tip for you. It's in my jocks. Welcome to the True Footy live stream, everybody. So you got the Crows sitting in ninth and you have the Giants sitting in 14th, but the Giants have looked good in the last three weeks. I don't know how yeah, hard, Harley you can hold the Sydney win because didn't uh, Gold Coast is also collapsing his cheeks? They did, they clapped them into a new millennium. So Port Adelaide's history is uh, Port Adelaide Footy Club, the Magpies, right? And in the SNFL, they wore the sample, they wore Collingwood sort of style, black and white, kind of different, but then they joined the AFL in 97, uh, forming a new entity, the Port Adelaide Footy. Port Adelaide fans who support the AFL team equally consider themselves the Port Magpies, like they think yeah. of it as one huge entity. Like yeah. they say, established 1870, they can't really- They're still the Magpies in the sand aren't they? Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, but they are technically two entities. But yeah. anyway, so when they came into the AFL, they adopted the color teal. Um, which is what Eddie said because uh, obviously there's already a black and white team so there was an agreement that they can't wear black and white stripes. Collingwood are uncomfortable with uh, Port Adelaide wearing that jumper too much. So in 2007 there's a signed contract saying that, that Port Adelaide can wear, because remember we used to have heritage rounds? Yeah. You can wear um, you know, a heritage jumper. So Collingwood, including Eddie McGuire, signed a contract saying you can wear this jer jersey one-off um, in heritage round. And then there was also an interesting side note that said that you can't, uh, Port Adelaide agreed not to sell a retail line of their Port Adelaide jumpers. If you look at their recent like heritage game, the, the half the crowd were wearing the Port Adelaide Magpies jumper. Couldn't they like, just sell it through the Magpies club? Probably yeah, like Port Adelaide Power. But that's how I'd get it. If I'm not yeah. yeah, for sure. If I'm not mistaken, they actually had an AFL logo on it. What Port Adelaide now lobby lobbying for is to wear it in showdowns. Okay, so but there's no heritage round anymore. So Eddie's saying, hey, there's no heritage round anymore. That contract doesn't apply. And Kane Corns is like saying, why why is it okay that they wore it in the heritage round now? Why did you sign that contract allowing it? And then now Colin don't want it. To sum it up, really, Port Adelaide is saying we want to wear this once or even twice in showdowns only. Collingwood and Maguire are saying like stuff, yeah. It's, it's, it definitely sounds like Collingwood's other bonds that are being unreasonable. Yeah. To just say like, look, we're only gonna wear it in heritage round, it's never gonna clash, and for Collingwood to be like, nah, only because it slightly resembles their fucking jersey, that mm. just seems a little bit uh, dumb. But if you're looking at the, what the contracts are signed, Port Adelaide oh, yeah, don't right. really have a leg to stand on. E exactly, yeah, yeah. They've mm -hmm. done everything they've had to do legally from the binding contract. Mm -hmm. It's kind of unreasonable to not sign a new contract to say, okay, fine, because there's no heritage round, we'll let you wear this in showdowns only. Yeah, exactly right. I guess that's a good way to sum it up is to say, yeah, I think Colin would have been a little bit precious with it. point that it seems that Cape Corn was getting to, you've signed a contract to allow us to wear it once or twice a year. Yeah. Given there is a heritage round. Now the heritage round is dropped, we still want to wear that once or twice a year. Why mm. is it not reasonable that we can just pick a new date that's not going to align with you? If you if you allowed it before, why won't you allow it now? The only thing that I don't like is Fife's game style change from like early 20s to late 20s. I just remember him being like so like athletic. Like he was like mm. jumping like above packs and taking crazy marks. He was so accelerate out of like contests and now he's very like and it's probably due to like maybe his leg injuries that he had or well, Hogan's gonna, a lot slower oh he's gonna kick a goal his oh, first he just goal for the goal club. yeah I remember the first half of 2015 Fife was one of the best players we've ever seen like he was just ragdolling teams I remember that game against Adelaide in Adelaide uh, where Danger was on top of his game for Adelaide and they went head-to-head. -head. I think they had like 40-odd each. And he was just like, yeah, he was just grabbing opponents on his back and running, running through them. And I think he bruised his sternum pretty badly in the middle of that year and he came back and was nowhere near the same player and Freeman have dropped off a cliff next year, complete rebuild. And it, now they're in a weird phase where like, I suspect they're protecting Fife a little bit because Freeman are nowhere near the top of the ladder. We chuck our once in a generation player in the guts where his body's getting annihilated every week and he's probably gonna retire at 31 while we're bottom four to eight. That just seems rough to preserve a player because you're not doing as well, but like realistically how much better you're gonna do by the time his career is actually done. Yeah, but the other side of it as well, are they doing a service for him? As GWS are kicking their way away from Adelaide here, they're kind of doing a service to him in the sense that he was getting absolutely battered, like he was so injury prone. Yeah. Um, they're literally, hopefully, 
for his sake, extending his career to about 34, 35. Yeah, yeah. So, so good, good question here from Jen Will. Who, in your opinion, are in a false position on the ladder right now? Or do you not believe in false position? I think after six, seven rounds, you can definitely yeah. say some teams are like, it's not reflective of where yeah. they'll be. So let's have a look. I'd say the two ones that look vulnerable, it's fair to say, will be Sydney and Fremantle. Yeah. Fremantle win the Derby tomorrow. They're five and two. And you have to say, like, look like a finals team. I'd like to think the Eagles are better than 11th. And maybe even Geelong in fourth. I think that actually flatters them a little. Yeah. And the siren blows on a 69. No, 67 points. Oh, I wanted Sorry. to stay the 69. Sorry, I got 69 on the brain. All right, here we are post-stream with the Bushman. We just watched Adelaide get their cheeks clapped by uh, a GWS side that uh, looked hungry, Bush. What do you think Quite of the game? hungry. They were very peckish. Mm. Jesse Hogan, very good debut for GWS, I'd say. Yeah, does that hurt? It does. I kind of, you could see it kind of coming. He needed to get out of, like, footy-obsessed places like Melbourne and Perth. Derby tomorrow, though, Bush. Yep. How are you feeling as a Freo man? I was saying earlier in the week, like, this was assuming health. I've just got the gut feeling. I think Freo is just going to smell blood with the Eagles, like, after the Geelong game. They've had a bit of an up and down year. Freo have lost 10 derbies in a row. They feel like they're due for a win. I think they'll see this is their best opportunity to win a derby in a while and attack it really hard. Tip and Ross Glendening, Alan Medal win medal. What a medal. Well, well I, my tip earlier in the week was before this Luke Ryan stuff came out. I just, I thought Freo were going to put them to the sword, but now that Luke Ryan's in doubt, like, if we have Luke Ryan playing, I think Freo win probably like 25-30. Cox is in? If Cox and Luke Ryan are in, I think about 40. If it's... Free medal by 40. Seven well, if it's Cox and Logue, Probably still got it, but... So a seven-goal swing on Luke Ryan. Close to it. Jeez. All right, so you're tipping Fremantle uh, significantly, yep. and who's your medal winner? Mundy. Mundy. All Get right. Get another three votes. Get me close to that two grand. Yep. All right, good luck, bro. I hope you lose. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, here we are at Druzy's uh, HQ. Yep. House of Content. We had some dirty news on the on the way here. Perth is in a bit of limbo at the moment. We don't know if lockdown is going to kick back in. Shucks! Had a, had like three cases announced overnight. Basically, um, there was this hotel worker and he's, he's been sick. But because we've been in lockdown, everyone's been wearing masks and that. So hopefully, we'll be all gravy. But until that time, we think we. Well, I think I'm going to the derby. Otherwise, we'll probably you're live streaming. I am. Hawthorne is just playing St Kilda right now, and uh, I changed my tip before the game. And I got to say that was one of the most Painful tip changes since Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> stinky. I tipped the Saints. Mm. I thought that'd bounce back. Tell you who's stinky. Fucking Collingwood. Yes, Collingwood fucking suck. Nathan Buckley, your days are numbered. All right, we're about to jump on the Port Adelaide Brisbane stream. We both changed our tip to Brisbane despite tipping Port Adelaide on the uh, on just the, the just tips. tips. But uh, yeah, tipping Brisbane by few. Yeah, home ground advantage and that. Brisbane have been like in decent form for mm. the last like two or three weeks. Um, and Derby's tomorrow. Luke Ryan out, Toby Watson in. No Hearn, Kennedy in. <laughs> no Barass. Yeah, I don't know. I the think excuses I think, are mounting. Yeah, no, nah, I reckon West Coast will win. Really? But up the fucking Dockers. Busher just tipped on this vlog. He tipped Fremantle by seven goals. No joke, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> Here we are on the Druzy live stream. There is about seven minutes to go in the Sydney Geelong game because there's three points to the margin. We switched it over because Port were getting their cheeks clapped. Uh, Sean is inexplicably in his jocks. Uh, no further questions asked. Blitz halves to the top of the square. The ball falls Guthrie. loose. 18 seconds to go. Guthrie. Are we going to get a play? The Swans could survive here. A ball comes out. Oh! 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 Jeremy Cameron! What? 15! Have they paid the mark? Oh, they paid not, not 15. 15. Fuck, that was 15 for oh. sure. Holy fuck, that was a mark. That's the game. The Swans prevail by two points. Holy, Holy shit, what a game. Wow, it'd be great to see a replay of that uh, that non-paid 15. Although, so Geelong have won one in controversial circumstances, so they're probably owed a one. Yeah, fair. Hello, you plonkers. Back at my house now. I uh, had a pretty late one at Druzy's house last night. Don't misinterpret that. We just stayed up late and uh, had a chat indulged in some chicken nuggets and today we are back for the derby unfortunately you would have seen that uh there's no crowd at the office stadium so i can't actually go to this so instead of vlogging the game i'm gonna be having to vlog myself doing the stream all by myself unfortunately as well because uh everyone's got plans a little bit nervous now there's the injuries starting to pile up but uh i'm gonna back my boys in all right kicking off the stream g'day guys you might not actually know this about Lockie schultz but he did play a very minor role in the movie the hobbit as an extra. All right, two goals apiece after a slow start from the Eagles where Fremantle dominated possession. They got a bit of momentum back. Jermaine Jones kicked a dope ass goal. And, uh, and then Josh Kennedy got the end of a good pass. 
And uh, yeah, playing more on our terms in the last couple of minutes. Hopefully we can sustain it. Maka wants me to show, show us your missus. She's not my missus. <laughs> Uh, Darling has kicked, and that is going to sneak through for a goal. The Eagles are up four goals to two, and Daniel Busher can suck my left nut. I'm yeah. Hopefully, right. your team kicks no goals, and my team gets lots of goals. That's airtight analysis, buddy. Gap has a set shot here. I'm surprised they didn't pre record booing. The Eagles have turned the tide for the last two minutes. Zach Langdon is lining up to put us in front. He has kicked a goal. Great snapshot. I don't know how we got a free kick there, but we somehow got one. 56 plays 50, seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Jermaine Jones has an opportunity here to find Darling. I don't think he's got the lead. Yes, he has. Good mark. Oh my God, Darling, you fucking moron. What, oh, I can't believe you, Darling. I love you, but what the fuck? He has jailed it. The Eagles go into half time, 13 points up. Is it a little bit generous? Maybe, I think we've been, or oh, it's hard to say we've been better. I feel like maybe slightly. The forward line is produced today. Off, um, off their opportunities, but it's a very even game in every stat, so uh, 13 points probably does uh, flatter us a little bit, but gee, I'll take it. Let's see what young Druzy has to say at halftime. How are you feeling? Uh, Eagles are asserting their dominance. A little bit. Yeah, we just keep making mistakes and it's just backfiring straight away. Cripps from the 40 meter mark has kicked a goal. The Eagles steal one. Capitalizing on a bit of a mistake from Fremantle there. Good pressure from the Eagles and they extend the lead to 21. But Allen intercepts against so the Eagles just putting all their force on Fremantle's defense right now. And again, not, oh, he's found, he's found Kennedy. That's a good lead up mark. Eagles just having a bit more legs at the moment. Fremantle kind of stopped. Brander lining up. This is 39 points to almost shut the door on Fremantle completely. He's done it. Suck on that, Daniel Busher. But the siren goes as the Eagles win by 59 points. Clap the cheeks of our crosstown rivals. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Daniel Busher, famously, and I'm not going to let him forget this, tipped Fremantle by 40 points. Fremantle kind of stopped in the second half, but it is a very satisfying win against a team that I respect as an outside chance for finals. Well, he was quite undermanned today as well. I know Fremantle are too, but without some really key players in that midfield, without Hearn, McGovern and Barath down back, and without Liam Ryan in the forward line, uh, and of course, Willie Rioli still not available. Gap. Kelly and Redden were really good. Sheed was really good, as they needed to be. Dominated the midfield battle. Nick Knapp was prominent, uh, and Harry Edwards was great. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the stream. 133 likes is awesome. 42 viewing currently, about 3,500. Druzy chimes in with an I'm depressed. Good, buddy. All right, the stream is wrapped up, and a very, very satisfying and convincing win by the Eagles. I know there was a lot of doubt around the Eagles, and probably understandably so, but it's nice to answer some of the... The criticism, particularly Fremantle fans who thought we were really vulnerable today, um, to make a statement like in the way that we did, it's probably one of the most satisfying derby wins of the last 11 that we've won. It's probably top three in terms of the satisfaction. So I'm stoked. And what I've also learned is it's stupid how much an Eagles win lifts my mood. And I've realized how much uh, like the way I feel coming into a new week is dependent on the Eagles. So. Stoked with that, I've probably probably our best win of the year in some respects. People might look at uh, maybe the home game against Port, and we also beat Collingwood up a fair bit as well in Perth. But to do it with the injuries that we had, um, and that was also our biggest margin of the year to actually put a team to the sword. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the most convinced I've been of an Eagles uh, performance all year so far. I do think Fremantle kind of just didn't show up in the second half, but I think they showed up in the first half to be fair, and I think they played a pretty good brand of footy. I think they're a very decent side. So to at least be up by 13 in a half where we were serious, seriously challenged, um, I think that really spoke volumes. It's good to have someone like Harry Edwards coming to the side, and that's the kind of the silver lining of these losses. Some guys who wouldn't otherwise get opportunities are getting games. Petrocelli's now in the side, um, probably wouldn't be if Liam Ryan was injured. Um, Gov, Barras and Hearn obviously all missed and Edwards and uh, also Young Witherden came in and didn't look out of place at all. It was a good round of football, only scored 4 out of 9 of ticking and uh, I think we knew going into this round how really hard it was going to be to predict this game. I got Carlton wrong. Um, they beat Essendon, what people are saying was one of the games of the year, which I obviously missed. But yeah, plenty to talk about on the Drew Footy Show. If you haven't seen it already, we have made a Drew Footy Instagram. Do go check that out because you can contribute to our weekly Drew Footy Show on Drewzy's channel uh, by submitting questions related to each game. And you'll have your questions answered on the show, which is dope. Anyway, going to wrap up the vlog there. Very satisfying round of football. Very happy the Eagles are back in the eight. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.